All right, hello, we're live. Hello, everyone. My name is Stacey Nelm, the Executive Director of the Kansas African American Affairs Commission. Welcome to our Monday Lunch and Learn. Hello, I am joined today by Miss Melissa King. Hello. Hi. <laughs> oh, you don't. You can't be shy like this now. We were, we were just chatting away, and all of a sudden, <laughs> Melissa King is the Director of Appointments at in the Kelly administration. And I get so many questions all the time about appointments and how people are appointed and why aren't there more women? Why aren't there more black people? What's going on with appointments? And so I finally said, okay, Melissa King, I need her on to give her a half an hour to talk about everything having to do with appointments. How are you doing today, Melissa? Good, good. I'm excited to get to talk to everyone. Cool, cool. All right, everyone's favorite part. I'm going to read a little bit of a bio that I pieced together. Melissa King began her work with the Kelly administration in the fall of 2019. The Office of Appointments is tasked with assisting the governor in appointing Kansans to the over 500 boards and commissions in the state. Now, as the director of appointments, Melissa assists in every part of the appointments process from commissions like mine, the Kansas African American Affairs Commission, to several Senate confirmed appointments. This includes guiding people to the appropriate paperwork and preparing candidates for Senate confirmation hearings. Ms. King graduated from Washburn University in 2020. Look at you, just a newbie. <laughs> uh, with a Bachelor of Political Science and Mass Media. Let me not say that. But don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. You know what you're yeah. doing. You do your thing. So thank, thank you, you for joining me today, Melissa. Yeah, thank you. My first question is always, what are you, what are you having for lunch? I haven't had lunch yet. I am very, very bad about packing my lunch. So I'll probably go downstairs at the Capitol and get something from the cafe downstairs. After. Figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to just know, like, is any committee like having lunch? You can't... <laughs> yes. Yes. Usually Pretend like you're a concerned lobbyist. <laughs> yes. Okay. So today we're here to talk about appointments. So what you are the, and, and, and you have a slideshow presentation. Mm -hmm. So when do you want me to start that? And then I was going to have you talk about your job. Um, I can, you can go ahead and pull it up because okay. it starts kind of with an overview of the office. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so I'm the appointments director for the governor and our office oversees um, the entire appointments process. Um, so we help the governor find qualified individuals for appointment to about 200 state boards and commissions. So our office helps recruit people for those positions and then coordinates the entire application and review and background process. And then we move those appointments to the governor for her final review and consideration. So that's kind of an overview of what my role is. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, um, there are about 2,500 gubernatorial appointees throughout the state. Um, so that's a lot more than a lot of people usually think. Um, most of them are created either by a statute or an executive order. Um, so they range from licensing boards to boards that work under state agencies. Um, and there's usually a specific requirements for each board set in the statute um, based on party registration, um, geographic requirements, um, and professional experience. Um, a lot of those are required for certain industry boards that regulate um, and license professions. Um, and then most appointments are unpaid volunteer roles, but um, most do provide reimbursement for travel expenses. So especially if you're from far west Kansas and have to travel to Topeka, a lot of them do cover um, gas and hotels if needed. I was going to say, even my commission, it has those party registration guidelines mm -hmm. and location of residence. So we have to be politically balanced and there should at least be representatives from all the four, four congressional districts. So that mm -hmm. those type of things apply to even my commission. Yeah. Um, so you can go to the next slide. Um, so there are about 200 state boards and commissions. Um, they range from commissions like the African American Affairs Commission um, to the Board of Nursing um, to the Board of Regents. Um, so there are a lot of different areas and there's really something for everyone's interest. Um, about two dozen of them require Senate confirmation, which just means that the appointee has to be voted on by the full Kansas Senate. Um, this process is a bit more intense and I'll go into it later. Um, but all boards and commissions um, require engagement from the legislature, different cabinet, different cabinet agency leadership, sub cabinet agencies, um, and the Secretary of State's office. So there's really something um, kind of for everyone. And then you go to the next slide. Um, 
So first I'll cover our non-confirmed appointments. Um, so ones that don't require confirmation by the Senate. This process um, is shorter um, and requires less paperwork um, and takes about two to three weeks at minimum. We just require that all appointees um, fill out a short application online. It only takes about 10 minutes. Um, and then on that application, you can attach a current resume. And then we do require everyone to submit a certificate of tax clearance and a statement of substantial interest. And those are both online and fairly short forms. Um, once we get everyone's app application materials, we'll do a quick background check internally, um, and then we'll set up a quick phone interview, and then we compile all of the application materials and get those to the governor for a review. Um, so then once the governor approves the appointment, um, the appointee is free to start serving immediately. Um, you know, next slide. Um, so for Senate confirmed appointments, um, this is a much longer process. Um, it takes about four to six weeks just for the application and background process, but from the time the appointee applies to being fully confirmed by the Senate, that can take several months to a year, just depending on what time the appointment is made. Um, so it requires everything of non-confirmed appointments, the initial application and everything like that. And then it does require a KBI background investigation. Um, and this part takes about four to six weeks and requires a lot more paperwork. Um, and then the KBI interviews the appointee, they'll interview um, listed references, they'll interview your neighbors. So it's a much more intense process. Wow. Um, so these are, but so these are not like, for example, my board is not Senate mm -hmm. confirmed. So what types yeah. of positions are people subject to this extra uh, scrutiny? It really just depends. It's about two dozen, but it's for boards that do have more of a time commitment. Um, some of the Senate confirmed boards are the Board of Regents, um, the Kansas Corporation Commission, um, the Kansas Development Finance Authority. So it's ones that have um, a lot more oversight on specific agencies um, and things like that. So it is most of the Senate confirmed boards are um, a much um, larger time commitment. Gotcha. Um, and for these, we, they're often reduced to a single candidate. Um, so before we make the appointee go through all of this, um, we usually have it narrowed down to one person. Uh, so you go to the next slide. Um, our other type of appointments are judicial appointments. Um, our legal counsel's office um, coordinates most of this process, but um, I do work um, with them on the Senate confirmation piece for the um, Court of Appeals appointments. Um, so there are several judicial appointments that the governor makes. Um, some of them are to the state appellate court, district and county courts, and then local and magistrate positions that open up. Um, and some of these are a mix. Some are open processes where people apply to the governor's office directly um, and then go through the interview and application process there. Um, but most are um, through nominating committees, which are locally um, in the county or district where the vacancy occurs. Um, and they handle the application process. They'll do their own background and interview process. And then the governor receives anywhere from three to five names for each vacancy. And then that individual goes through a KBI background check and then um, an interview and review with our office. Now, this is one I wanted to sort of spend a, a couple extra minutes on. Mm -hmm. This is this is the, 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 the judicial appointments is the one that most people ask me about. But you mentioned a nominating committee. So mm -hmm. can you can you expand on that? Because that's even I think this is the first time I've heard about it, the nominating committee. So go ahead. Yeah. So for most of these um, vacancies that occur, the governor doesn't appoint a person directly. She gets sent um, several names through a nominating commission. Um, so that's um, the nominating commission reviews. Most of them um, are made up of attorneys and non-attorneys from that specific district. So. Um, they usually know people within there and they um, do the application process and it's usually an open call for applications. So anyone can apply um, and then they narrow down the candidates and then- Would applying through your website get to the nominating committee or is that something separate? It's usually something separate. Usually if a judicial vacancy is open, usually the nominating commission will do a press release announcing the vacancy and then how they plan to do the application process. And those are done by- I guess by district or 
Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily by county because I'm sure some out west, some counties have more than or some yeah. districts have more than one county. Yeah, it's usually through the judicial district and the Office of Judicial Administration helps coordinate that too. With the, the Office of Judicial Administration. I'm going to have to look that up because <laughs> this is this is the one that I get yeah. the most the most que- the most mm-hmm. questions about. I get a lot of questions about appointments, but the judgeships. So yeah. and it's kind of confusing because it's two kind of different processes. And then Court of Appeals is also a nominating commission and Supreme Court. Right. So those are an app, open application process, and then um, finalists get sent to the governor. Okay, I'm not to look that up. Okay, thanks for that. Um, Next thing. Uh, well, the only thing I'll touch on is court of appeals are Senate confirmed, um, so they'll have to go through that process as well. But most, um, you know, county and district um, judicial appointments don't require Senate confirmation. Cool. And then cool. next slide. Um, So next, I kind of wanted to go over some of our demographics numbers, Um, finding Kansans, making sure that boards represent um, Kansans has been really important to the governor. Um, So we've started tracking some of our demographics numbers just um, to make sure we're hitting um, census benchmarks. Um, Let me go to the next slide. Um, So this is kind of a snapshot of where um, the gender ratio on boards and commissions started when um, the governor came into office in 2019. Um, 37% of state boards and commissions um, were women and 63% were men. So as of October 2022 is when the last time we did our demographics report, um, state boards and commissions were at 45% women, 55% men. So we still have a ways to go, but throughout the governor's first term, um, this does represent an 8% improvement. Go to the next slide. Um, and since taking office throughout our first term, she has made over a thousand appointments to state boards and commissions. Um, 19% of those appointees have been persons of color, and of those appointees, 64% have been women. Um, and another area that we track um, is geographic diversity, because we want to make sure that um, rural Kansas and urban Kansas both have um, adequate adequate representation. Um, 32% of appointees um, have been from rural areas, um, which exceeds the census benchmark um, of 25%. And then 68% of appointees have been from urban areas. Go to the next slide. Um, so this kind of gives a snapshot of our judicial appointments. Um, Governor Kelly has made over 50 appointments to the bench um, throughout our first term. 68% of those appointments have been female, 32% have been male. Um, 16% of all judicial appointees have been persons of color. And of those appointees, 62% have been women. Um, And then some kind of cool judicial appointment benchmarks. Um, Judge Rachel Pickering was just confirmed by the Senate um, to the Court of Appeals, and she is the first Hispanic person to ever serve on the appeals court. Um, Governor Kelly appointed the first Jewish woman to the Kansas Supreme Court um, with Justice Melissa Taylor Standridge. Um, And then Judge J.C. Hurst was the first woman of color um, to serve on the Kansas Court of Appeals. Um, And she was confirmed in 2021, I believe. Um, And then with Judge Rachel Pickering's appointment, um, the Court of Appeals has a female majority for the first time in Kansas history, which is pretty exciting. Um, You can go to the next slide. Um, So these next couple slides just have the links to our application materials, which this application can be found on the governor's website under the Serving Kansans tab. Um, There should be a tab that says Office of Appointments. Um, So individuals interested in appointment can go here um, and apply, and it filters to our database. Um, And once we get those applications, we can reach out um, and see if um, there's any boards that we would like to consider you for. So this is, I just dropped this one in the, in the chat. So when people click, click on this, it's like a, a form comes up. Mm-hmm. And so if a person does, let's say a person doesn't know what they want to, they want to, to, to serve on. So if someone is just like, gosh, I just want to sort of put my name out there or see what's to what, what will this form take them to? Um, so there is a slot, there's a drop down menu on the application and you can select open to any board or commission. So if you want to serve, but you're not sure where, um, you can select that. And then we review applications on a rolling basis. So we'll reach out to see 
um, if there's a specific seat on a board that we think, um, you know, your application and qualifications would be a good fit for. Uh, but then on the application, it does list every single board or commission. So you can look through that list and select multiple boards that you would be interested in. Okay, cool. So you, can, you can't pick more than one. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if it's like nursing or what's it called? Healing arts or yes. they're, they're different boards. So yeah. Because yeah. there are a lot of boards that deal with you know the same issue. There are a lot of behavioral health boards, different boards like that. So you can select more than one. Cool, cool. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, so this is the link to the certificate of tax clearance. We require this of all appoint appointees. Um, it only takes a few minutes to complete. Um, so once you get that submitted, you'll get an email within about 48 hours from the Department of Revenue with that link. Um, and then we just ask that you email that to our office so we can add that to your application. Cool. I dropped that link in the chat too. <laughs> cool. Um, then you go to the next slide. Um, and then the final thing that we require for all appointees um, is the statement of substantial interest. This is required for um, most gubernatorial appointees, um, and it's, fil it's filed through the Secretary of State's office. Um, so once you fill this out, we can make sure that it's up there and verified. Um, but we just require those three things for all appointees. Um, and then you can go to the next slide. Um, and then this is the full list that is required for Senate confirmed appointees. So non-confirmed appointments don't have to go through this, but this is the full list required for the KBI background investigation. So it is a lot of paperwork, but um, this is required just for the KBI background process. And none of this leaves um, our office or the KBI. And once the background report also does not leave our office per statute. Um, then you can go to the next slide. Um, so this just kind of gives an overview. Um, submission doesn't guarantee an appointment, but um, your application does stay with our office. So if there's not an opening um, available when you apply, we'll keep it on file and we review applications on a rolling basis. And we do go back to applications too as vacancies come up. Mm -hmm. I know that there was a person who was interested in applying for my commission and went through the paperwork and a position wasn't available, but I remember you contacting me saying, okay, we want, we, we know we want to appoint this person yeah, to something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'll, we'll go back to her and figure out yeah. where, where is a good foot, mm -hmm. a good fit for this. Yeah. Person. Cause there's always spots coming open um, as terms expire and, you know, as people um, vacate different positions. So there's always different appointments coming up. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so if you don't get your dream appointment, there's a better appointment. Just yes. right around the corner. We will find something for you. <laughs> um, and I think that's my last slide. So I think you can go to the next one. Yeah, and this is just my contact info. Um, gotcha, so gotcha. Also happy to answer any questions or if anyone's interested, I'm happy to set up a call as well um, to kind of talk through the process more and what we have available. All right. Well, that, yeah, I put, and I put, I put your, um, so everything's in the chat, including your email address. And I'm trying to scroll back through get to my agenda, make sure I've covered everything I wanted to cover. All right, cool. So thank you so much. I think the, the biggest the biggest new thing for me was the nominating commission committee for judicial appointments. Because mm -hmm. um, like I said, that's that's the question I get the absolute most is, do you happen to know, like, is there a point person for that, depending on judicial district? Well, that's the other thing is I don't know how judicial just judicial districts are broken down. Like yeah, it, it's they're broken into different regions, and I can see. I think there's a contact um, with the ju main judicial office, and I can get that to you so you can send it out. Yes, um, but it is, and the, the process varies depending on which district handles it. Gotcha. Yeah, that would be helpful, and I'll put it. I'll send it in the links. So every time after one of these things, in, any links that a person mentions, anything that comes up in the conversation. I type it up and send it out on the on our email list serv. So if you are not if you're watching this but you are not on my email list, please go to the website and there's a big thing that says sign up for email. So sign up for email. <laughs> that way mm -hmm. uh, you'll get all these links to how to apply for commissions. I think commissions one of the things that's important and a point that I wanted to make about commission boards and commissions is that this is these are the places where a lot of the work gets done, right? Um 
because let's face it, the governor can't do everything. She mm-hmm. can't pay attention to everything, but she can place people on commissions to do to, to do the work. So if you have ever wanted to get involved in in the government at a little a little higher rate, like some people get involved and, you know, maybe they want to email their legislator or whatever, that's fine. But if you're like, gosh, I, w- I have a, a skill set or a knowledge base and I want to get involved at a little deeper rate or a little deeper level, I say this to go to the boards and commissions is definitely one way to do that. So I serve, I personally serve on this board and I serve on a county board in Johnson County, um, the Fine Arts Commission, believe it or not. But then make, I, I, my my bachelor's degree is in art, is in art mm-hmm. history. So it makes sense. And it, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. I get to at least use a little bit of my actual college degree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now as an adult. Okay. So definitely the the boards and commissions are a place for people to go if they are looking to get more involved. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that, Melissa, you made a great point of saying is that the governor is very focused and intentional on diversifying her appointments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyone out there who's like, I'm diverse, (laughs) please consider applying for boards and commissions. All right, cool. We're down to less than 10 minutes. So I wanted to leave a couple minutes at the end to do my little commercial for our upcoming Black Legislative Day at the Capitol. And let me get my link to sign up for that. The Black Legislative Day at the Capitol will be on Tuesday, February 14th. I actually want to sort of nickname this like for the love of the legislature. But it'll be on Tuesday, February 14th. It'll start at 10 a.m. and go to 3 p.m. There will be a lot of different sessions of of topics to cover anything from CPOS training to Medicaid expansion to medical medical marijuana um, to some criminal justice reform issues. Uh, we will have a, a little a little light breakfast, some pastries and coffee, and lunch will be in, incorporated covered with it. That's what the registration cost is for. And um, it'll be a wonderful time. If you would like to, again, just learn more, if you're thinking, I figure if someone's watching this, this lunch and learn, there's someone who's ready to get a little more involved. So boards and commissions, actually, D'Angelo Burns Wallace has, cause she, I had, I had already lined her up to talk about boards and commissions oh. and she like went and got a life, and did. <laughs> but she, she's going to come back to talk oh, about yeah. boards and commissions again. So uh, we will cover, we will, we're going to hit this boards and commissions thing hard. Good. Lots of different topics on how people can get involved. And we will also have opportunities to have small groups of people go talk to legislators. I'm, I'm the one in charge of setting those things up. So if you've ever had an, an idea or something that you want to talk to your legislator about, or just, you know, if you've never been to the Capitol, this will be a perfect time for that. All right. So Melissa, is there anything else you want to say? Any last commercial for boards and boards and commissions? Um, I don't think so. Just please, please apply. We're always looking for people. So good. Everyone's interested. Yay. Fantastic. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We will be back with another Lunch and Learn next Monday. I'm pretty sure we're going to be talking about the Crown Act. So I will say goodbye here and we'll see everybody next Monday.